Welcome back dear learners. This week we have been exploring different activities a delegate performs in a committee. We have talked about how a delegate can research in a holistic manner. We have also talked about how a delegate can put one's research in words and express clearly in 30 to 90 seconds. Now, we come to the most exciting and rather grey part of a model UN conference, the area negotiation and diplomacy. This part is considered the grey area because negotiation and diplomacy almost always happens outside the formal committee timings. They can happen during lunch breaks or during the unmoderated caucuses. They can begin in the opening ceremonies and continue through the formal committee procedure in the form of chits. There is no way to track or reward one's diplomatic efforts and is often noticed indirectly through the number of motions a delegate or a block successfully passes or a verbal support by the delegates in their speeches or through declaration of support and mutual cooperation efforts as this reflects the success of one's lobbying efforts and diplomacy. In any setting diplomacy happens to achieve a goal and these goals can vary depending on the setting or the person in a political setting such as a model event conference this can be gathering enough votes to pass one's motion moderated caucuses or more importantly the draft resolutions the goal on a personal level can be including one's name as a sponsor or a author of a draft resolution or becoming its main presenter The goal of diplomacy in a model event conference can also just simply be a result of a delegate feeling isolated due to their portfolio's position in the committee which might motivate them to seek allies for a sense of safety. Model event conferences take place in a highly competitive environment which forces the delegates to cooperate and form coalitions and here the stakes of a delegate becomes highly relevant because if one delegate can predict the goal and the stake of his fellow delegate it's easier for the delegate to make deals and establish a quid pro quo which essentially is offering something while promising something in return to make a deal alliances are formed based on common goals and aspirations we have previously discussed how there are direct indirect and indifferent portfolios and alliances can happen between anybody main direct portfolios can become allies example pro russian separatists and russian government similarly a direct and indirect portfolio can also become allies example ukraine and nato then there are those indifferent countries who choose to follow their traditional foreign policy goals example venezuela would go ahead and support russia and become an ally despite not being affected by the agenda your allies can help you in multiple ways firstly they can vote in your support both during the moderated caucuses and the draft resolutions Secondly they can ask questions that would help you strengthen your stance of the committee An example of this can be the delegate of Venezuela would like to raise a point of information for the delegate of Russia asking why the delegate thinks it's hypocritical for USA to oppose Russia's actions By giving an answer to this question the Russian delegate can strengthen their argument on the issue and this would help the delegate make a bigger mark in the committee's direction It would also help the delegate who raised the question since the delegate will be marked for the question third and the most important advantage of an ally is formation of a block and the possibility of inclusion of your name as a sponsor or author of a draft resolution becoming an author or a sponsor is not just for name sake as this allows the delegate to actually put forth their solutions and suggestions they expressed via their speeches on the resolution thus moving the committee in a direction of their foreign policy it's also important to note that While negotiating with non-allies, keep in mind to negotiate in a good faith. Try to earn your opponent's trust and make efforts to work together always. Explore your common ground and respect their points of view. Above all, remember that both of you are representing your portfolios and have no personal opposition or dislike for each other. Try to keep your non-allies in loop, mainly for moderated caucus topics, keeping every delegate in the loop. since moderated caucus topics should be neutral and should be something everyone can speak on example a moderated caucus on the causes of russia ukraine tensions is a neutral topic wherein both sides can give their points of view whereas moderated caucus on the role of usa in worsening russia ukraine crisis is considered to be a more of a one sided topic where usa and its allies cannot talk much about it except for maybe calling the allegations false Another important point to remember here is that many times when blocks are formed on traditional relations 
all the blocks can have similar points and yet chose to remain separate for various reasons such as not including one's name in the draft resolution as a sponsor or lack of communication with regards to one's points thus it's advisable for the delegates to be aware of each other's points and solutions to make sure that they do not overlap model un conferences also provide delegates a large exposure to people coming from various backgrounds these people move on to become allies or competitors in a committee acting as delegates over the years as the delegates gain more experience and more expertise in the conferences the delegates might be called upon to act as committee dais members for a committee this would be done mainly when a delegate has good contacts in mun circuits once contacts will be really useful in the future not just for model un conferences but in all professional phases in general let us summarize our learning this week a model un conference requires three important skills firstly the skill of research where the delegates study their respective committees its agendas and their portfolio in relation to the committee and the agenda secondly the skill of public speaking where the delegates express their research to influence committee progress finally comes the skill of negotiation and diplomacy the goals of which vary from committee to committee but are focused on enhancing the delegates relations with each other not only for committee duration but also for long term connectivity this is aimed to enhance the skills of cooperation and consensus building among the participants this we come to an end in understanding the core concepts that were to be discussed in this course in our next week which is our final week we aim to focus on understanding the various tips and tricks of operations for delegates ip members and committee dais members for a smooth and enriching model even experience thank you